Hi, I'm David Farkas with Shaquatics Water Polo, and welcome to our first episode of Ask a Coach. I'm excited today to talk to Mark Nelson of the Hill School in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, which is a private high school. Coach Nelson started coaching boys water polo in 1980, and in just his third season, went undefeated and won the Eastern Championship that year, his first of five. In 1985, Coach Nelson won the Eastern Seaboard Coach of the Year Award, and this year he was inducted into the Hill School Athletics Hall of Fame. I should also note that Coach Nelson is a senior master teacher of science at the Hill. So without further ado, let's talk to Coach Nelson. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this with me. Thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's great. I'm just, uh, it's so funny. I'm we're a boarding school. I'm a, I have library duty tonight, so worked out perfectly. I'm like down the basement of our library right now. There's kids was, like outside the door studying. Hopefully, I was wondering you had the hill thing in the background. Like you got that at your house? You're really into this school? No, you're you're at the library right now. So that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I figured it'd be a good backdrop anyway. So it's a great backdrop. So I want to know. I want to know what's different in 1980 than today. I know the game's changed so much. Give me a flavor for what it was like in 1980. I want to know. It was a lot different in 1980, especially on the East Coast. I think Hill started water polo in 1974 or 75, and it really was just a way for the swim teams to get in early. They were pretty strict about them only swimming during winter season. Yeah. So all the swim coaches out here, except a few, figured out, hey, we'll call it water polo and we'll just – start when school starts so they weren't and even then, interested in polo it was just a means to not win really but there was a lot of really good swimmers on the east coast at hill petty germantown Mercersburg. you know they'd been turning out kids that were going to the olympics so when i came here in 1980 i mean the swim team was unreal see that's what always frustrates me about our country because we we don't tap into the immense swimming talent on the East Coast East Coast and make them water polo players, because water polo is so focused here on the West Coast, and I know the swimming is so good on the East Coast, right? We're missing out on hundreds and hundreds of athletes that could help us be successful in the Olympics, especially on the guys team. Hundred percent true. I mean, two of the guys that played in the Olympics back back in the day, Wolf Weigel and Brett Shoemaker, both from the East Coast. Right. They were young high school kids when I was, you know, maybe around mid 80s. I don't know the exact year. I worked hard to try to get both those guys to come to the Hill. Uh, Are you serious? You tried to recruit them? Oh, big time. Yeah, I knew Wolf's dad pretty well. And then Brad, there was no way I was getting him. He was down at Annapolis training with Mike Schofield all the time. So there was no chance I was actually going to get those guys, but it would have certainly been nice to because they've obviously, nice. uh, grew up to be unbelievable players. But I mean, Brad was a great example who was an unbelievable swimmer mm -hmm. who also was an unbelievable water polo player. So at Hill, we really, really focus on like, get every swimmer that it comes to the Hill. We'll teach them water polo. Like very few of our girls know how to play water polo before they come to Hill. Mm -hmm. We just tell every swimmer, Hey, get out here. And then we try to grab basketball players, ice hockey players, oh, yeah. like, Anybody that's really a good athlete, and we have a lot of good athletes at Hill. So it's a little bit different because where you coach, lots of kids have played a lot of water polo by the time they get to. They have, but you can't, you can't replace that swimming background, coach. No question about it. I mean, uh, I tell you, if I get a kid I have to teach swimming to, uh, we can do it. It just takes a long time. So when you have the swimmer, it's so much faster. You know that. You yeah. I think when I took over the team, I think in 1982, I mean, we might have had like, we were all guys. We might have had like 40 guys in the program. Wow. I'm telling you, like 15, 20 of them could go sub 48 seconds for 100 freestyle. Wow. So you can bang out like a pretty darn wow. good old fellow team when every <laughs> starter in the first four guys off the bench are sub 50, free, you know, 100 freestylers. That's high school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, you know, and some of them were a lot faster than that. So yeah, that's good. And it's kind of funny, you know, you say what's different. I mean, back at then at Hill, we were all boys. So besides school and sports, there was nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. No distractions. <laughs> oh, that's nice. You no, know, we've been co-ed for quite some time. So now, you know, we have half as many boys and, you know, 
little more distractions, but it's a better school all, overall, though, being going and water polo has changed a lot. I mean, back in like the 80s, like I say, it was really just getting kids extra swimming time. And when I came, I, I'd gone to college for swimming, but I learned water polo there. So when I came here and the coach, re, swim coach realized I knew water polo, he let me take it over and we started becoming a really good team really quickly because just not that many coaches knew what they were doing. That's changed dramatically now. Yeah. Now this, this area of Pennsylvania is a real hotbed for water polo. There are a lot, a really? lot of teams. Yeah. And that, this weekend we're going to what they call the beast of the East tournament. I think mm -hmm. there's something like 150 high school teams that are going to be wow. attending all told. So I'm glad it's, to hear that. it's really popular in this area. All the public schools, every single one has a team. Like when I, my freshman year in high school, you, the, uh, the referees used the batons, you know, with the flags yes. either end. Yeah. So that was yeah. a thing I remember. And I was, so that would have been, that would have been 90, 90, 91, 10 years, yeah. year, 10 years in. And, um, I miss those. I miss those. I like them. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Now you say it, we have one in our closet, the blue flag really? on one end, the on the other. Yeah. And so it, yeah. like if the blue team had the ball, the referee would raise a baton and had a blue flag on it. So everybody knew, right? Yeah. Half, half the uh, spectators watching the sport have no clue what's going on. They could use a little help. Pretty big time. Right? I, I think mean, that help. Half of, my, half of my new players don't have any half idea. It, exactly. I have, right. <laughs> I know when I'm refing, they don't know. I'm going this way. They have no idea who has the ball this way. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. My, I wanted to say... Um, I don't know if you've ever done this. I want to know if you've done this. So my co if if my coach was mad at us, like let's say I'm on the blue team and we're start we're giving him attitude and he's refing, he would uh, you know, because you just take those things off, he would take the blue flag off and throw it on the ground. Like he's not gonna give us yeah, any never, balls. Did you ever do that? Never gonna be blue ball. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever took the flag off, but I would never let blue get the ball either. It'd be a, <laughs> it'd be a turnover every time the ball oh, gets blue yeah. Gets the ball. Yeah. Yeah, probably not that different. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I looked at your uh, record. Do you know your record for the boys? My overall? For just the boys. boys record? Yeah, yeah your it's... record. Yeah. What? I don't know. I don't know what it's at. 334 wins, 243 losses, and it says four ties. That sounds about right. What's a tie? How do you tie? I didn't even know that they was used to tie back in the day. They just, they wouldn't play over time. And some of the tournaments, a game might just end in a time tie just to conserve time. But not anymore. So that was, that was not anymore. Like, not anymore. And I don't know, you know, this is a little bit before you were in high school, I think maybe, but I went to the 84 Olympics and the U S actually tied in the, I believe it was a semifinal game. So then they didn't advance. Like really? there were ties even in the Olympics. Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, I was out there. I went they out west. Win. They had to, to win the Olympics event? in LA. Yeah, you had to like, it went by like goal differential. <laughs> wow. Ridiculous. But that's that how it was. Ridiculous. So that's where you got like the four ties from was probably like a couple tournaments where they were like, oh, we don't have time just going to whoever has the goal differential. Well, I'm glad I'm asked. I'm glad I asked. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I want to know, I want to know too. So I coach, I don't know if you know my program, I coach kids up until high school and then I let them go to their high school coaches. That's what I've been doing for 20 years. So I, I usually awesome. say I specialize in preparing them for high school. So I try to, I try to hand high school coaches, the kid I would want to have. Um, so I kind of wanted to know from you, what what do you what would you want me to teach them one or two three things that you want a kid coming into your program now i know you coach a lot of kids that have no polo experience but let's say you could have a kid with some polo experience what do you want them to know coming in so i want all the kids to hear what they should be learning i'm i mean i think for us at hill whether i'm teaching biology in the classroom or i'm using water polo as a teaching tool number one thing having the kids in just with uh feeling of like doing the right thing, being a nice person, working hard, don't disrespect other people, like really just live your life like the right way. And then strictly from a water polo standpoint, you know, just be fundamentally strong, you know, 
try to do things the way your coach has been trying to teach you, you know, how to do them and realize that's not always going to be perfect all the time and kids make mistakes. And, you know, I think, I think really just in life, just teaching kids how to be the best person they can be is the best thing you can do for them. And I think that's what every parent tries to do for their parents as well. Yeah. Every kid's a little bit different, but you know, having that work ethic where you're like, really believe in yourself, you're willing to work hard for what it takes. You understand like the team concept that it's not just me, me, me. It's, it's everybody. You're just part of a team. We, we call it a family at school. You know, even our whole school is based on kind of the, a, a family boarding school. You know, everyone has value. Not everybody's going to be equally good. Mm -hmm. You know, you've coached a million kids in your life. Some are just genetically more gifted than others. I mean, it's just that some work harder than others. And then some have both. The rare ones are extremely gifted and really work hard. Yeah. And they're nice people. And, and all those things go a long way. Because, you know, nobody's going on from high school, it's be rare, to become a professional water polo player or rarely to be a professional anything, I think, in my 44 years here maybe we've had two three hockey players that have made it into the nhl several kids have made it to the olympics in swimming but you know most people are just going to go on to life doing whatever whatever they do so i think it's really important as a coach to try to teach them like those values yeah that's part of when i looked at your that the hill at the website i kind of got that um, sense that it's a big character school character driven school and I get the sense that you're a big character coach yeah that I mean that's my whole thing I mean I rarely I, I don't know I had a swim coach he was he never screamed at us like ever in either my high school or my college coach I did a lot of other sports I played football I did track some coaches were screamers and some weren't and the ones that like were always about win 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 just didn't appeal to me the same ones that were just focused on get better, get better, get mm -hmm. better. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be as good as we're going to be. And if we win, awesome. And if we don't, so be it, as long as we put in our best effort. So, you know, I, John Wooden, you, you know of him well enough, I would assume, you know, amazing basketball coach. Dude, never talk about winning. You just talk about doing things the right way. And as a result, if you do the right things for long enough, the winning just comes with it. Yeah. I mean, who's not going to say that winning's more fun than losing? For sure, winning's more fun than losing, but you're not going to win at everything in, in life. And so we really just focus every day on getting better, getting better as individuals, getting better as a team, doing things the right way. And along the way, we've we've had a lot of success. Our boys and girls teams have won a lot of championships by not focusing on winning just focusing on doing things the right way. I was really, um, I don't know if frustrated is the right word, but I, I watch NBA basketball a lot. And um, the Bucks lost this past season in the playoffs. And the, one of the reporters asked Giannis, one of the stars on the team, is your whole season a failure because you didn't win the championship? And um, I wish that Giannis had thrown one of the wooden quotes in, you know, the success yeah. of mind attained only through self-satisfaction and knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. And it's funny you mentioned wooden that uh, some people frame success in terms of wins and losses. And that's a dangerous road to go down because you don't control whether you win or lose. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. And it's so much the competition. I mean, yeah. Every once, you know, every once in a while you blow it like, yeah, you could have won and you didn't. But more times than not, it's just that you got to match up and you either match up positively against them or you don't. But if you put everything you have into it in your preparation and your practice and you go out on game day and you put everything that you have out there, it may it's going to hurt. But you can walk away with your head up knowing that you did everything you could. hundred percent. 100%. And as kids get older and they're heading to high school and then college, et cetera, like very few of them are going to get into every school they yeah. they want to apply to. Very few of them are going to get every job they ever apply for. That's right. Right? right. You just do the best you can do. You present the best of yourself every day, whether it's in the classroom or at the pool or whatever sport you're into. You just put in your very best effort and that's all you can do. And then when you make mistakes, which people do, learn from your mistakes and move on man i want to send my kids to your school 
I wish everybody would. It's an amazing school. I love teaching here. My wife teaches art here. Our kids went to school here. Really? It's amazing. I teach biology and I spend as much time teaching my kids like how to just be successful in the classroom, not just biology, like success. Yeah, I teach biology. It is life, study of life. Yeah. Teaching them like how to be successful people. And, you know, my classes only have like 10, 11 kids in them. That's like pretty standard. Wow. So if you've got a handful of kids in there, it's like coaching your own team. And then each period, of new, you know, the next wave comes in and you got another 10 or 11 kids. So you can really make a huge impact on them. And the kids live here. It's a boarding school. So 100% you know, all the kids live there? Not, no, every kid lives here at some point. But we have a 540 kids approximately, about 100 are day students at any given time, local kids. But they'll live here either their junior or senior year. So everybody boards at least one year just to get ready for college. I mean, 100% of our kids go to college or maybe they take a year off and then go to college. But we are a college preparatory school, but that's the basic gist of our thing. But more importantly, we just teach them to be like, hopefully, great people, great leaders. So that sounds like a good, a good thing to teach. I wish more schools would do that and focus on that. I mean, I think some more schools wish they could in some ways, but. Well, I know. feel like a lot of people talk about it and I feel like a lot of coaches talk about it, but not everybody does it. Do you know what I mean? Like all, you won't find a coach that says, oh, I don't teach character. Or I don't deal with life lessons. They all say they do, um, but a lot of them don't. Some of them do, you know, that's what, that's the coaches I want to learn from. Um, some yeah. schools, some schools talk a good game about character, but you actually have to do it. You actually have to put in the work. And you, and you have to do it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like all, day, really all day in about. the pool, yeah. out of the pool, like, you know, and you have to live it yourself. Like you have to be the role model that is the positive example. Right. Try to, you know, impress upon the parents who are all doing the best they can do that. It's also important that they be role models up in the stands and things like that. Yeah. And, you know, and if people aren't behaving right around them, then, you know, ignore them or whatever. I mean, whether we just said, you know, if you don't have something nice to say, as my mom always said, don't say it at all. And yeah. we take that like right to like social media and everywhere else. Like kids at our school, they are not allowed to call out like an opposing player, like in any kind of match from the stands or if they're competing. Parents are never allowed to like call out a player by name or say anything negative. Can't can't yell at the officials or anything like that. It's, it's not tolerated. I love that. Yeah. it's So it makes coaching so much easier because everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Right. You, the, the guys, you know, are, it's crazy. We have a really old pool. It's small. The fans sit like right on top of you. I love that. Those are the hold, best games the to play. Place holds like maybe, maybe comfortable, like a hundred people we consistently might have a couple hundred people like literally jammed in there, hanging all over the, each other. So even on years, we're not very strong. This year, our girls team is not particularly strong. People still turn out to support them because mm -hmm. they're all friends of them. They know they're working as hard as they can. They're all, we have a super young team this year. You know, we're going to struggle for wins, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have a successful season. I love that attitude. I was, um, you reminded me of a story. I was at a high school game uh, like two or three years ago. It was a girls' high school game. And I was just sitting in the stands. The opposing uh, team, they were switching sides. So all the girls were walking in front of the stadium seating. And the opposing team's parents were like heckling the high school girls. I'd never heard anything like this before. They were saying things like one of the things was like, oh, these girls can't score. Don't worry about it. Stuff like that. They were being really insulting. And I was looking at these parents and I was thinking, these are high school girls. You're heckling. You're an adult. You're heckling high school girls. Where do you, what are you doing? Yeah. Right. So I love it's the fact that you don't tolerate that. I'm, I'm guessing you guys have a, thing that the parents sign where they or you have an expectation or some kind of code how Absolutely. do they know? yeah when you yeah uh spectator code of contact yeah, everybody views it when they come in i love that if if 
it's a problem. We have uh, an athletic person at every single game that's played in every single sport. They're going to address the adult or whoever at that time, and they're either going to comply or be asked to leave. Can you imagine coaching a group of girls and then listening to the opposing team's parents heckle them on the changeover? Yeah, that'd be awful. We're guys even for that matter. I mean, oh, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just happened to be a girls team. Right? Right. They're just it's like insane. high school kids. Sports are like, in the end, about having fun, really. I mean, they're not, it's not played for the fans' entertainment. Let's put it that way. It's different professional. Okay, that's more like going to a rock concert. The NBA, as you mentioned, they play so many games yeah. that part of it's like putting on a show, entertainment. Yeah. But high school sports, it's great that the fans turn out and really enjoy it, but that's not the purpose of them competing and certainly not the age of the kids that you're coaching either. No. I mean, that's almost 100% character development at that age character and physical development they get stronger they stay healthier because they're stronger because they have a focus they do better in school all those things go hand in hand yeah i think one of the biggest things the youth coaches can teach is how to achieve something how how to do that and what it feels like when you do that it's like every skill a kid learns is just a mini a mini advancement for that kid where they understand that it took hard work and consistency to get that and then how good it feels once they get it. And every time that they do that sets them on a different path, a stronger path. Like you said, when they get a job, when they're interviewing for a job, um, they have more confidence. Even if they don't get the job, they understand that they got to work hard and eventually they'll get something um, because that's the way it's worked, you know, in their athletic life. Yeah, it's awesome. You totally understand that. And many coaches don't. But, you know, every little thing you're teaching, you're just teaching them a life lesson. Yeah. You know, you know you're know, you teaching them a lifestyle, a productive life lesson. Yeah, you're right. You know, and then, you know, the days of the future are the kids you're working with right now. When you say they do this or they do that, the days of the world are the kids we're teaching right now are going to be the ones leading our, you know, our city, states, country. 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you know, they're the upcoming generation. So, you know, we, we try to like, you know, we're very anti, you know, culture right now is doing a lot of things like you're talking about going to games and like booing people and acting, you know, disrespectful to the players. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to combat that current culture nationwide at our own school a little bit at a time and hope those kids, when they go on, will spread that, you know, to the next place they go. Well, I hope it spreads all over the country. I love what you're doing. I love the, the character development that your school emphasizes and that you emphasize. I could probably talk to you for a couple hours. Can we do a part two sometime? Sometime anytime, later? Anytime you want. I, I really appreciate your videos as well. In the summertime, uh, I send out our every girl on our team like a couple of videos every single week. They're either oh, from you that. or you know, you or you know, Brad or Wolfie's, you know, videos, things like that. Because nice. all those little tidbits, they really help help out. And when the kids hear more than just from me, yeah, that helps also. Well, I'm I am so thrilled that I can coach more people than just in my little world over here. The fact that other people might learn something from me across the country or across the world just kind of it's a kick in the pants. I love it. So thank you, coach, for sending those videos out. And thank you for taking the time today to talk to me. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, ab absolutely my pleasure. A anytime whatsoever. And if you, anybody out there watching, or you want to send their kids to the Hill School, send them on out. We're a little bit outside uh, Philadelphia area. And look look us up online and check it out. It's an amazing place. Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I looked it up. It does sound yep. like You have a great night. Thank you so much, David. I'll talk Thanks, to you later. Coach. Talk to you soon. Uh -huh. Bye-bye.